All right. It's officially back to school night. Um, and my name is Mr. Foreman, uh, Marina Vista Elementary School, fifth grade, room 26. Uh, so I'm excited to be here with you today. Um, recording the meeting, so I'll be able to send this out uh, to anyone who uh, unfortunately cannot be here this evening. Um, but it's a pleasure, once again, to be within my first year uh, with uh, Marina Vista Elementary School. Um, and of course, to be with our fifth grade uh, cohort, our incredible scholars. Uh, so my name is Al Foreman. Uh, I've been teaching for a collection of ooh, about nine years or so. Um, I've had the privilege of teaching uh, second grade, uh, middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade for four years, um, second grade for one year. Uh, I've subbed several grades, uh, primary, secondary, um, a professor of communication studies with a community college district in Sacramento, Los Rios Community College District. So I taught higher education college for three years uh, prior to coming back. Uh, and being with you here uh, with fifth grade. So it's a pleasure, I'm really excited. Uh, the start of the year has been great. Um, we've had challenges, of course, with our, um, our, our COVID protocol and making sure all of our scholars are healthy and safe, um, that they are uh, coming to school without symptoms and they are social distancing to, to a certain degree. Um, and we, we're being very diligent with that. Uh, I might have to repeat some of this information and just making sure everyone gets acclimated. So we'll do a, a hard, fresh uh, start um, in a couple of minutes here. Uh, so maybe like another two minutes, just so uh, I'm not repeating uh, my the information too much. Um, so I'll give you another quick little introduction and then we will watch a video from the principal um, uh, of Marina Vista Elementary School. So bear with us for a couple of minutes, uh, see who all is going to join. And as I mentioned, uh, we're recording. Aquí yo también voy a ir, vamos a ver. Siéntate bien. Nadie me Vas a chingar. All right, so let's do another really quick uh, um, uh, fresh start. Uh, once again, my name is Al Foreman. Uh, Marina Vista Elementary School, super excited to be here. It's been a great start to the school year uh, thus far, uh, the 2021-2022 school year uh, within Pittsburgh Unified School District. Um, this is my first year with Marina Vista Elementary School, first year with Pittsburgh Unified School District. Um, as I mentioned uh, before, I've taught for a collection of about nine years or so, uh, one year second grade, four years in middle school, sixth, seventh, seventh and eighth grade humanities, um, and a collection of years as a substitute teacher, uh, an intervention teacher, um, a, a PBIS uh, associate instructor, um, and I've also been a professor of communication studies with the community college district in Sacramento, the Los Rios Community College di District for about three years prior to coming back uh, to grade school and uh, being able to join Marina Vista here. I'm super excited to be a part of this classroom. We have a fantastic uh, group of students uh, and we have um, a great structure within Marina Vista. Uh, building our curriculum and centering it around our um, our common core standards for the state of California. Uh, so basically, I sent home uh, a student letter uh, as well as a parent letter, and the students also have a student syllabus. Uh, the syllabus is uh, basically an outline of what the expectations are within the classroom environment, uh, building a community atmosphere. Um, which is where we are working individually, of course, to master the content uh, with, uh, according to fifth grade standards within our classroom environment, but also working collectively, building a sense of community where students want to help one another, uh, get the information they need, they're comfortable expressing themselves, and they feel safe within this environment. Uh, those are really important uh, foundational concepts for me within the classroom that, uh, that I facilitate. And I think that our classroom, um, I think they've, they've, they've bought in and they've acclimated uh, to this community-centered uh, approach. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I'm going to talk about the student syllabus, and I'll actually put that on screen momentarily. Um, also talk about some of the routines that we've developed within the classroom and what you can expect going into um, the remainder of this first trimester, into our second trimester and for the remainder of the year. Um, now, for parents, uh, I am easily accessible uh, through Dojo. Uh, I have a Dojo account set up. If you don't have access to that, please don't hesitate to let me know. I will uh, put my email up uh, through the syllabus, um, and I, I'll put my phone number as well. You can send me a text message if you like, or give me a call 
Um, we can set up a parent teacher conference as well. If you have any specific questions about your student, I won't be answering any specific questions uh, because we, don't, we have a limited amount of time here, uh, but I'm, I'm accessible and I, I'm readily, readily um, um, engaged and interested in setting up times to meet and make sure our scholars are where they need to be, um, getting the information they need, they're motivated, um, and we know all the nuances that will help them in this learning environment. All right. All right. Um, so we have a video that we'll have to watch uh, right now. It's a great video from the principal. I'm going to go ahead and get that started for you. Uh, so give me one quick second here, and then we will get right back to talking about our classroom environment. So hang with me for one quick second here while I start our video. Good evening, Marina Vista families. Thank you for attending our virtual back to school night. This presentation will be available to view in Spanish on our Marina Vista website and also through the Parent Square app. Questions regarding this presentation should be directed to our administrators and not your scholars teacher. Buenas noches, familias de Marina Vista. Gracias por asistir a nuestra noche virtual de regreso a la escuela. Esta presentación estará disponible para verla en español en nuestro sitio web de Marina Vista y también a través de la aplicación Parent Square. Las preguntas sobre esta presentación deben dirigirse a nuestros administradores y no al maestro de su estudiante. Gracias. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to our staff. My name is Felicia Bridges, and I'm the principal here at Marina Vista. Our vice principal is Ms. Joanne Rovner Curtis. Our preschool teacher this year is Mrs. Asid, TK, Ms. Adame. Our kinder team is Ms. Galley, who is filling in for Ms. Gillen, who is out on maternity leave. Ms. Torres Lopez, Ms. Mosby, and Ms. Zygachenko. In first grade, we have Ms. Amaral, Ms. Kaufman, Mr. Mattingly, and Ms. Rodriguez. Second grade, Ms. Balechi, Ms. Bronzer, Mr. Chiato, who is filling in for Ms. Mullen, who's also out on maternity leave and will be returning to us next Wednesday, Ms. Dehart, and Ms. Macias. In third grade, we have Ms. Alexander, Ms. Dudley, Ms. Heath, and Ms. Jensen. In fourth grade, Ms. Ascaraga, Ms. Shimamoto, and Mr. Tice. Fifth grade, Ms. Becerra, Mr. Feg, Mr. Foreman, and Ms. Tun. Our prep teachers are Mr. Jackman in PE and Mr. Longley for science. And this is the first time in a long time that we've had a standalone science class for our fourth and fifth graders. So we're excited to have Mr. Longley, Ms. Salvador, and Ms. Salvador in music. Our instructional support staff are Ms. Belechi, who teaches resource, Ms. Soto, who has our self-contained class. Our school psychologist is Ms. Ibarra, and our speech pathologist is Ms. Sturgeon, the speech assistant is Ms. Denham, and our instructional aides are Ms. Cardosa, Ms. Martinez, Ms. Nine, and Ms. Roberts. Support staff throughout the school include Ms. Maxwell, who's our literacy coach, Ms. Lynn, who's serving as our intervention teacher this year, Ms. Jackson, who we're very fortunate to have as our guidance counselor, Ms. Arambula, our principal secretary, Ms. Perez, who serves as our parent and family liaison. Ms. Payne, who is also new to our staff this year as our mindful life coach. Mr. Coleman, who's our Lincoln Center coach. Ms. Perry, 
who's, I mean, our, our Lincoln Center clinician, excuse me, and Ms. Perry, who also works with Lincoln Center as our intervention specialist. Also supporting our kinder team is Ms. Lucio Luano. Our goals for the 2021-22 school year include making sure that we address and monitor the academic needs of all of our scholars. We're going to do this by using assessments to monitor our students' growth and to drive our instruction. We're going to also do this by maximizing instructional time. We also have expanded learning that will begin um, next week as well, and that's after school. And also during the school day, we have intervention happening in small groups and some one-on-ones that's being provided mostly by our kinder teachers in the afternoons. Our second goal is to make sure that we provide a safe learning environment. And this can look several ways. So we want to make sure that our students are aware of our school-wide rules, be safe, be respectful, and be responsible. Um, those are posted throughout the school and in our classrooms and we are, they're reviewed and we remind students of them regularly. Also, um, in reference to COVID, we are limiting visitors on campus at this time, as most of you have recognized that our doors are not um, open. Um, and so we're limiting visitors at this time. Also by following district and county health protocols for COVID safety, which I will go into um, after this slide and making sure that um, during our drop-off uh, times that we're following those procedures um, and making sure that our scholars are safe when they're being dropped off and picked up from school um, each day. And our third goal that we're focusing on is making sure that we're addressing the social and emotional needs of our scholars. So this year we are um, investing in a character and social emotional learning program called Purposeful People that focuses on 10 character traits. Um, you, as parents, will be receiving information um, each month that will um, also share with you the character that we are focusing on. This month, our character trait is respect that we are teaching um, all of our scholars. Last month when we started school in August, it was gratitude. Um, we also have, as I said before, a Mindful Life project. We have a Mindful Life coach on campus. And the focus of that is to help teach us some mindful practices in order to help us really kind of understand what we are experiencing in our feelings and in our bodies and teach us some tools and how we can um, address those and, and effectively express ourselves. Um, we are fortunate, again, to have a guidance counselor um, assigned to our site. Currently, she's with us every day. Soon, she will only be with us uh, at least twice a week as we will share her with another elementary school site. We have our cost team that provides um, reviews students who are and families that might need some additional services and make contact with families and students um, regarding the services that they may need as well as our Lincoln Center staff that provide mental health counseling here on campus. Now, as it relates to the health and safety protocols that have been established by the County Department of Health and adopted by Pittsburgh Unified School District, um, I want to be clear that when students who are coming to the office or sent to the office with symptoms that could be related to COVID, we are not sure. Um, they will be um, sent home. Um, I know that many of you have received those phone calls um, and some of you, um, it, it presents, you know, it can present a hardship, especially if you're at work and we're calling you to say that your student needs to be picked up. I want you to understand that the purpose of that is to um, try to maintain a safe and healthy healthy of an environment here on campus as possible. So the protocols that have been established by the County Department of Health and adopted by Pittsburgh Unified School District is that if students present with symptoms, they, there are a couple of options. They go home for 10 days, at least 10 days, unless they, um, you are able to 
provide us with a doctor's note that lets us know that their symptoms are not COVID related, or you provide a negative COVID test in reference to your student. Um, again, the idea and the goal behind this is to make sure or to try and ensure the health and safety of um, our, our school community. Um, these are not guidelines that we just created ourselves here at Marina Vista. They have been adopted by Pittsburgh Unified School District as outlined by the County Department of Health. If your student is sent home or you call us and let us know that your student has been home ill and we let you know that they will need to stay home for at least 10 days or provide us a doctor's note um, that rules out COVID or you bring a negative COVID test, we will place your student on a short-term independent studies contract and provide work for your students to complete while they are away that they must return when they come back to school. So this is very important that the work that we um, provide for you, that your students complete that and return it when they return to school. Marina Vista is a Title I school, and Title I is a K-12 program that provides additional academic support and learning opportunities for students. The program is intended to help ensure that all students meet challenging state academic standards. So um, our goals uh, for Title I this year, we take a look at our um, assessment data and we use that to regularly monitor our students' growth um, as well as looking at their coursework and how they're able to um, perform in their classwork. We also wanna make sure that we're addressing the social and emotional needs of our scholars. We're discovering that after students have been out for uh, over a year in distance learning and um, the you know half of a year prior um, before that, that um, there were opportunities in which they were not able to socialize and um, play with their peers. And so we're um, having to make sure that we address um, you know, the social needs of students as well as their emotional needs and returning to um, in-person learning. We also, of course, are providing direct instructional support to scholars in our whole group classrooms, as well as small group instruction, intervention, providing professional development to our teachers as well, and promoting um, opportunities for parents to receive um, some professional development as well, education, and talking about ways in which you can be involved. Um, so how are our Title I funds used? Well, um, in addition uh, to our regular um, tutoring services or expanded learning, um, additional intervention and tutoring um, will be made available for scholars as needed. Um, we have our RAS Kids reading program um, to help promote uh, reading and literacy. Uh, we have used the funds to purchase supplemental academic materials outside of the regular adopted um, textbooks for um, our school. Um, we provide support to our staff through our media center aid who provides, uh, who makes copies of um, materials and classwork for um, classrooms, providing professional development for our teachers, again, promoting parent educational involvement, as well as um, we, uh, we have invested in our uh, as social emotional learning character program called Purposeful People. Parent involvement. So the ways in which you can be involved and provide input or feedback here at Marina Vista, um, our school site council. Um, it's important to, uh, that we have parents that sit on our school site council. Our school site council is the body that um, reviews the spending of our Title I funds. These are federal funds that each school site receives, elementary school site receives. And the school site council oversees um, and monitors and approves um, the spending of the funds for Title I. And so it's important to have parent representation on our school site council. If, you would, if you're interested in, in being on our school site council, um, please complete the survey that our parent family liaison, Ms. Perez, sent out um, seeking 
uh, volunteers for our school site council, as well as when she sends out the ballot that you vote um, for our school site council parent representatives. Um, our first school site council meeting will be on September 23rd via Zoom, and it will be a district-wide training um, for school site council and um, going over, again, the purpose of school site council and your responsibilities. Also, for our English language learners, we have our, our parents of our English language learners, we have our English Language Advisory Committee, or ELAC. Um, we also need parents um, to participate on that as it relates to our English language learners um, and provide um, advice and recommendations for um, our English learner needs. Our Parent Booster Club is also um, uh, a committee that needs uh, parent involvement as well. And another easy way to um, be involved is to just keep in contact with your with your students teacher, whether that be through class dojo or parent square and monitoring and communicating about your child's achievement. Um, our parent family liaison again is Miss Anna Perez, who will be sending out information regular, regularly about classes and other opportunities available for you. Also, if you are in need of resources, um, you can also reach out to Miss Perez. Um, the week prior to our October um, parent teacher conferences, um, a parent compact will go out to you. Um, and the parent compact is just an agreement between parents, the school, teachers, and students, which defines each of our roles and how we work together to make sure that we are supporting our scholars. So that concludes um, our Title I portion meeting, our Title I meeting uh, for this evening. I wanna thank you for trusting us with your children. I do recognize that you know these are still uncertain times and in the mornings when you're dropping your students off um, and sending them through the doors, you are trusting us um, and trusting us with your children. And I wanna thank you for, for trusting us. And I promise you that we're doing right by your children here at Marina Vista and making sure that we are addressing those needs that were expressed in our goals, their academic needs, their social emotional needs, and providing safety for your scholars. So at this time, I'm going to turn you over to your classroom teacher who will share their presentation for their classroom for this school year. Thank you again for attending our back to school night this evening. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Thank you so very much for being present. Uh, I'm excited once again to be here with you all. Um, and I wanna make sure that hopefully everything's working well. Can you see me? Can you hear me okay? Can you get a thumbs up uh, from someone or anyone if you can hear me and we're good to go? Fantastic, thank you so very much again. Uh, so as I mentioned before our video, my name is Mr. Foreman, Al Foreman. Um, my first year at Marina Vista Elementary School, really excited to be here. First year within Pittsburgh Unified School District, um, but I'm not new to uh, Contra Costa County. Um, I had a privilege of going to Deer Valley High School for a short amount of time. I'm uh, from the region, but I'm originally from the Bay Area, Oakland, born and raised, and all that good stuff. Um, so uh, if you weren't here to start the uh, our back to school tonight, I uh, gave a quick little bio and I'll just, Go over some of the the you know the primary stuff. Um, so it's about my ninth year in education. I had the privilege of teaching second grade, uh, four years in middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Uh, and those were within Oakland Unified School District. I also had the privilege of teaching higher education as a, a adjunct professor of communication studies with the Los Rios Community College District. Um, and I've had an opportunity of subbing over a variety of districts uh, across the greater Bay Area, uh, including the East Bay, the Peninsula, uh, North Bay, South Bay, so on and so forth. Um, so it, it's a pleasure to bring all that experience um, and my great passion for education here uh, to this environment uh, to be able to uh, work with your incredible uh, kids, our scholars, uh, and building them and getting them prepared for sixth grade and middle school and all that is beyond. Uh, so our classroom environment is here, room 26. 
Uh, it's unfortunate that you can't be here in person, of course, uh, but as you saw in the video, uh, that's for a very specific and very important reason. Um, we are extending those safety protocols within the classroom, um, and we are ensuring that students are wearing masks at all times, um, that we wash hands and use sanitizer often. Um, we do have snack in class on occasion. Uh, we do have snack outside of class on occasion. Of course, there's lunch and recess and other times when students are interacting. But uh, I, um, as well as our administrators across the campus, uh, we implore that students uh, give each other personal space, that they keep their masks on, they wash their hands often, uh, and they remain primarily in their designated seated areas uh, for on a consistent basis throughout the day uh, to ensure that if there is any issues, any symptoms pop up, that we can do contact tracing, uh, families can be notified, so on and so forth. Within our classroom environment, as you can see behind me here, uh, students have uh, their spaces. Uh, we have supply boxes. Uh, students have their own textbooks that they utilize. We have some supplies that we provide it, but students are invited. They're invited to uh, bring their own supplies if they want, like colored pencils, things of that nature. Um, I want to be, again, as I mentioned earlier, a community environment where we are uh, inclusive. Um, we are practicing uh, the platinum rule where we treat uh, others the way they want to be treated. Um, and we are also putting uh, scholarship and academia at the forefront of our experience. Um, and I think we've had a great goal for these, these early couple of weeks that we've been together. Uh, so uh, this meeting will not be uh, a opportunity for us to talk about students individually, but I do invite you to reach out to me through either Class Dojo, uh, through email, uh, through a text message or a, a phone call on my mobile phone or on the office line, um, or also with uh, Parent Square, which is another uh, application that we're util utilizing through Aries, um, where, and you can we can request a parent teacher conference and we can talk specifically about uh, academic or uh, classroom management uh, related things with your scholar. Mm. So this would just be a general overview. Uh, momentarily, I'm going to show our um, uh, our student syllabus, which you probably already had the opportunity of, of uh, taking a look at. Uh, students have taken them home. Uh, they got them signed for extra credit, uh, and they bring them back and carry them with them uh, throughout the, the week. But we'll take a look at that just to talk about some specific things that we will um, focus on within the classroom. If you do have a general question, uh, again, it's a question just about our classroom environment, about our schedule, uh, about myself as your facilitator within the classroom, please, uh, you can put them in the chat. I'll check it momentarily um, or raise a hand. Um, and then we'll do, uh, we'll do every now and again, we'll stop sporadically for a Q and A session. Uh, but again, please, if you don't mind, uh, limit the questions to things that are in the general sense um, uh, specific to the classroom uh, and not necessarily to an individual scholar. All right. Okay. Uh, so if there are no questions at this time right now, I'm going to just jump into our student syllabus. Uh, let me just double check my. Okay. So let's jump to our student syllabus really quickly. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Hang with me for one second. All right, what we should be looking at here is our student syllabus. And once again, all students uh, receive their student syllabus and some of them provided them to our credible parents. Um, but it's just a quick overview of who I am, some information about me, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I have a plethora of experience uh, from different industries that I like to bring to the classroom. So a lot of what I've done in communication, uh, especially teaching at the higher education level, but also in broadcast journalism um, and working with uh, Alameda County Public Health Department, uh, Department of Communicable Disease Control and Prevention, Emergency Preparedness, um, Alameda County Social Services, um, and a couple other industries. Uh, I try to incorporate all that to uh, my pedagogy um, when I'm building curriculum, I'm thinking about uh, what is going to be in the best interest of our students, not just in the academic capacity, but in building better uh, humans, right? Um, because all of our scholars are going to grow up to be, you know, incredible scholars at the junior high, high school level, collegiate level and beyond. Um, so I try to give them stuff that's going to help them uh, not only here in fifth grade, but uh, going beyond that. So you'll see a little bit of that as we talk about expectations, classroom culture, uh, our discipline ladder, our currency model, uh, all that and beyond. So our classroom expectations are pretty straightforward. Um, when you come into the door, right next to the door, there are classroom agreements, agreements and our classroom agreements are um, as follow. I can read some of them to you. Um, give me one second here. I got my, got my other phone here. 
to make sure I can get everything I need to say out here. So we're once again, we're practicing the platinum rule, which is treating people how they want to be treated. Our uh, agreements specify how you want to be treated, which is the golden rule, which is what we probably all learned uh, as parents. But the platinum rule is more inclusive, of course, because it better reflects how our students and our community members have their own pref uh, preferred way of want wanting to be identified and treated. And so we kind of switch it from treating others how we want to be treated to treating others how they want to be treated. So we remain inclusive, uh, practicing that on a day in day out basis. We work together as a community. When I think of community, I think of uh, all individuals um, working together, uh, being uh, cognizant um, and accountable, um, but also understanding that you know someone may need a leg up, may need a little information, uh, may need a little guidance. Um, and I call on uh, a lot of my scholars on a consistent basis to support students that may have uh, a little bit of difficulty with challenging content um, or also um, something that we may be working on in the classroom. So I'd like to encourage those who have the information to be mentors and leaders for others uh, within the environment. And that's what I consider uh, a community um, centered or community founded uh, academic space. Uh, well, another, one, another, one, another one of our agreements are uh, that we work hard, we stay on task and we try our very best. Um, I hold our students accountable um, on a consistent basis uh, to do their very best in the classroom setting. Ask questions if they need information, uh, but also adhere to our social norms or our parameters in a classroom that are designed to keep our classroom distraction free for the most part. And you can ask our scholars, I probably am the majority of those distractions. We like to have a lot of fun in the space. Uh, we laugh a lot, uh, we have jokes, um, play music when we do writing, reading, uh, things of that nature. Um, we do snack as a collective, um, for the most part safe with uh, hand sanitizer and everyone in their own space, eating their own food and so on and so forth. But I like to, uh, to, to keep that, that togetherness and hopefully build a sense uh, where everyone feels safe and everyone wants to continue to just be part of the environment, contributing uh, part of, the, um, of, the, of our environment. Um, we also want to respect our resources. Uh, I'm still looking for Chromebooks to come back from students. We have about six or seven so far. So we're looking for maybe uh, 15 to 20 more Chromebooks. And we'll be uh, getting started on iReady assessment testing momentarily. Once we get more of our Chromebooks back, we'll be getting some from the library as well. But we'll be using Chromebooks on a consistent basis in the classroom. Now, I know our scholars are not new to this because they've had Chromebooks for the majority of the time they were doing distance learning. Um, and also, they've used them for the majority of the time they've been in elementary school, I think, um, for the last couple of years. Uh, we're going to practice those same principles with technology, respecting them, treating them as, uh, as we would our own, uh, but also being cognizant of when it's appropriate and not appropriate uh, to use that technology in a learning environment, and also doing appropriate things with the technology. All right. Um, you will have a technology agreement that has either gone out already from the school or that will go out. I don't send one out uh, myself, um, but I do have, again, uh, these expectations are revolving around the technology we use in the classroom. But that is also going to be extended to other um, privileges within the classroom. Um, I've set up a recording studio with a microphone that they'll use with their Chromebooks and an application uh, called Soundtrap, where I provided that all the students that have um, the uh, email addresses through uh, Pittsburgh Unified through their uh, their Clever account, uh, they should be able to have access to our soundtrack. We'll be starting it up in the next couple of weeks. Um, so they'll be able to utilize that um, to do fun stuff when we have extracurricular time within the classroom setting, but also to create things that uh, will align with our uh, story arc and our hero story component of our curriculum, where we'll look at novels that are focused on a main character that is going through trying circumstances, um, that's uh, being expressive of themselves, uh, building their character and becoming a better version of themselves. Um, hopefully students will uh, acclimate and be comfortable with the process of building a podcast where they'll try to find their voice and utilize the medium to do different things through communication, which is a passion of mine. I'm also going to use the opportunity that the principal spoke of next week to create an extended learning opportunity that will happen uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays after school. And you'll get uh, the scholar will bring home um, permission slips, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, so they, if they want to be involved in the extended learning opportunity, uh, they will uh, be able to do so. My extended learning opportunity will be. Uh, will be communication uh, center. So it'll be the uh, Marina Vista Communication Club. Um, and we'll focus on broadcast journalism, them creating new stories and sitting down.
down in an anchor or reporter capacity and delivering uh, their news story, uh, working on their intonation, on their uh, ability to uh, disseminate information uh, and controlling their emotion as they read uh, a script uh, in an extemporaneous capacity or in a conversational capacity. Uh, we'll also work on our Finding Our Voice through Poetry and Music, um, which I have a little experience in as well. Um, and last but not least, uh, expressing ourselves through uh, using um, uh, language, um, uh, using uh, different mediums, uh, storytelling, uh, narration, uh, biography, autobiography, um, and as I mentioned before, journalism, but expressing that uh, in a literal sense as well. Um, so I think it'll be a lot of fun. I believe the extended learning goes on for a couple of weeks. I'm going to I'm working on the structure now, but that's an after school activity, uh, but it'll just be an extension of the resources that are available in the classroom setting. Uh, another one of my uh, classroom um, agreements are that we are impeccable with our words. Now, what that means is that when our scholars are finding their voice, uh, they are expressing and communicating things that they're comfortable with and uncomfortable with in the classroom setting. They mean what they say and they say what they mean. Um, I think it's important at this juncture now to start to establish uh, their confidence in communication and dissemination of information. Um, I talk to students on a consistent basis about this next level being middle school. And for a lot of students, that means that they'll have a majority of classes throughout the day. They'll go to different teachers. Um, they'll be, have to be responsible uh, for their time, uh, responsible for their resources, um, accountable in all, um, in all capacities. Uh, and so, of course, a part of that is just them, you know, meaning what they say and saying what they mean. Um, and so we practice that within the classroom setting. I hold them accountable. We communicate on a consistent basis. Um, and I also talk to them about um, what the, the fallout is if you're not diligent in your activities um, and also accountable for yourself. Being gracious and courteous is a consistent thing that we talk about. Um, as I mentioned, with the community env environment, um, it's important that uh, students come ready to take care of themselves, of course, with their supplies, their homework, their textbook if they take it home, their novels if they take them home, work that's supposed to be completed, and there will not be a lot of homework. It will primarily be whatever is not done in class for a specific day. If it has to be finished up, they'll take it home, but I don't intend to uh, send home a lot of homework. I think the majority of the learning should happen in the learning environment, and I also know as a parent of four that it's difficult uh, sometimes to spend a lot of time uh, with your scholar at home working on things after a long day at work and so on and so forth, and I also think that scholars need some downtime because they're in school for the majority of the day, a lot of hours in the day. Um, so I try to maximize that time um, with learning uh, and doing what we need to do uh, to get to the next level, reach our benchmarks and be, uh, uh, be successful on our assessments. Um, but on occasion, there will be homework, uh, but those are on select occasions. I always bring into class the supplies you need. I provided all students with a supply box uh, in their desks uh, and they have them in their cubbies. The supply box has pencils, uh, sharpeners, um, erasers, uh, a whiteboard with a uh, expo or a whiteboard marker, uh, scissors, I believe. Um, and I have a majority, I have a, a, a plethora of supplies here. The majority of them uh, have an excess. So they have a lot of supplies available within the classroom if they run out. Pencil breaks, an eraser gets lost. Uh, we have a couple of sharpeners throughout the room. So they should have everything they need. Now, if they want to bring additional supplies, they are more than welcome. I invite that, uh, whatever they need to propel them so they can be the best. Uh, scholar they uh, can be. Um, the last couple of agreements are that, uh, sorry, here, uh, let's see here. Checking your work and turning in your work on time. Now, what we've done for these first uh, three, four weeks that we've been together um, is we've been just doing remedial work getting our fifth graders uh, acclimated and comfortable with our fifth grade curriculum. We know through our distance learning model, it was challenging for our fourth graders to get everything they needed, uh, be challenged and also be, you know, be comfortable not being in a, an academic environment. Um, and coming back into that environment this school year, it's been challenging for some uh, of the students, but majority of them, we've been, it's been great, it's been a great transition. Um, so I say that all to say that when we do have homework or we need to bring things back, whether it be a signature from a parent or work that they have to complete from the previous day, that they make sure that work is checked before they come to class and they have it ready out of their red homework folder uh, to go the first thing in the morning. Um, and so we'll start to be more point-based on that as we go into week six um, and week seven, 
Uh, progress reports should be available at the conclusion of week six, I believe, which is next week. Um, but they'll primarily be where our students are based on these early assessments that I provided, fluency assessment, um, a grammar assessment, um, a mathematical assessment with our first chapter uh, of our Go Math books, um, and a couple of other things. So the progress report will be based on those things, and not a whole lot of points as far as finishing things, having 100% uh, correct answers, turning things on in on time. We're getting there, and I understand that. So we're going to ramp it up a little bit as the weeks progress. Um, but I, I'm trying to meet our scholars where we are, uh, and again, be inclusive. Um, and that's what that, that agreement primarily um, relates to. Not disrupting class. Now, again, uh, touching on that, uh, us not being in a learning environment for a year and a half. Uh, really challenging, uh, but for the majority of our students, it's been an easy transition. They've had no problems uh, coming right in and doing what they need to do, uh, adhering to our classroom rules and regulations, as well as our yeah. school expectations. Um, and uh, we, we've been good to go on, on that front. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I want to pause for a second to see if we have any questions. I know I'm talking a lot, but I just want to kind of get us in and out in the time frame that we have. Um, any questions? Let me check my chat. And feel free to raise a hand or a. Um, I don't. Uh, my, <laughs> my Spanish, uh, I see, I see. <laughs> very little Spanish. Um, so I apologize for that. Some of the documents that I'm working on, uh, especially our letters and stuff, I did attempt to try to get them translated, but it, it wouldn't happen in time frame where I wanted to get it out. So if you need a document in Spanish, or if you need, to, if our scholar needs support in class um, with a Spanish speaking interpreter um, or an aide, then I can try to provide that um, where it's needed. So please don't hesitate to communicate with me. Um, or you can have a, a family, uh, another member of the family or family friend communicate with me if there's an, a need that, um, especially regarding um, speaking a, a second language. Uh, any other questions? All right, just gonna keep flying here with our student syllabus. Sorry, I can't see everyone, so I just have to scroll down a little bit. Okay, all right, so our classroom culture, I kind of covered our classroom culture. Um, I'm sorry, I have one more question here. Um, for Chromebooks, yes, yeah, so the majority of our students receive Chromebooks, um, I guess at the end of third grade year, and they went into fourth grade with those same Chromebooks. I'm not sure what the process was, again, new to the school and to the district, but uh, we received about seven back, and I believe that some students may still have them at home, but if they did turn them in uh, to the office or to the library or something like that, we're in the process of determining um, what Chromebooks we'll have for the class and if any students still have their Chromebooks in, in, in their possession, but we have uh, a process through our library here where they'll be reassigned to the classroom we have a uh, laptop cart um, that they'll be housed in and charged on a consistent basis. And we'll be able to grab those from the cart and use them whenever we want in the class. Every class has, has their own, uh, they call it a cow, um, but it's a, a Chromebook cart and we it's in class. So we'll use those um, on a consistent basis. We'll do writing, uh, we'll transpose, transpose our writing to uh, Google Docs and we'll work on typing. Um, we'll do research through our computers. Uh, again, we'll work with apps, media apps. We'll work with podcasting, building story arc. We'll use them to uh, pull evidence uh, for a lot of our expository reading, um, our informative reading, uh, descriptive reading, uh, and writing, I should say. Um, and so we'll, we'll use them on a consistent basis, but I'll make sure that before we start those activities that students will have the technology that they need. All right. Um, classroom culture, I spoke about that a little bit with our community atmosphere. Now, I do have a currency model that I've uh, kind of, you know, I've, I've baby stepped mm -hmm. into uh, usage within our classroom. I'm sure you've heard a little bit about it. So basically what it is, is the currency model is uh, our students get an amount at the beginning of the week. Um, and that amount is hundred dollars. Now it's not obviously real dollars. It's classroom currency, foreman currency, or call it a pioneer bank. Now, the idea with our currency is I'm trying to kind of cover two bases at once. I want students to be accountable within our classroom. And so uh, currency can be uh, 
can be extracted from them um, if there is a need. For instance, if they have to use uh, the lavatory or the restroom um, in close proximity to a break, right after a break, right before a break, uh, meaning they're not being diligent or accountable for their time, then we do take some, some of their currency away. If they have an excessive need for supplies, which is an ind indication that they're not being responsible with the usage of their supplies, pencils, as I mentioned, erasers, sharpeners, meaning multiple times in a the day they need a pencil or eraser or whatever the case. If we would take away some currency in that scenario, uh, cons consistent disruptions within a classroom environment, um, you know, being, uh, having, being challenged in um, our uh, movement from one place to another in lines, you know, again, it's something that scholars aren't used to, uh, being that we haven't been in this environment for an extended amount of time. Um, so the currency model is not to be a dis disciplinary um, tool although it can work in that capacity. It's what happens in all of our lives when we have things that we have to be accountable for, like bills, um, extracurricular things of that nature, we have to pay for those things, right? You know, um, and so I want students to have that experience where they have a set amount and they have to be responsible and diligent about how they're using their currency throughout the week. Now, there is a benefit to having a, a, you know, a good amount of currency at the end of the week. We have free time Friday, which is an hour at the end of the day on Friday that students who earn it, meaning they have a certain amount in their balance, they can earn that time, that, that free, free time Friday uh, time frame, the way they can play games, they can read, they can draw, they can interact with their friends, all within a classroom environment, obviously all safely, wearing masks, so on and so forth. Um, but you have to have in a certain amount. So an example of this will be, if they get $100 for the week, they have to have $80 in their balance minimum uh, on Friday to participate in their uh, free time Friday. So that means that throughout the week, uh, they've uh, more than $20 has been extracted from their account for whatever reason, you know, having used a restroom too many times. And of course, this doesn't include if there is a medical reason or if there's been something communicated with a parent in relation to using the laboratory. That's not notwithstanding um, or th that won't be impactful. Uh, they won't have a negative uh, impact on a student. But uh, with all things remaining constant, uh, needing excessive supplies, disruptions, things of that nature, they'll have to They'll have to pay money for that. And we recently included or some additional things that were uh, student suggested, uh, not being on the correct page in a reasonable amount of time after there's been uh, a specification of what we're transitioning to in the classroom, meaning if we're moving from uh, ELA where we're reading a novel and we're moving to our mathematics section and we're opening our gold math books, slow transitions, being off task, continuing to doodle or holding conversations while everyone else is getting situated. If you're called out on that, it could be a deduction. So again, there is a disciplinary component to it, but it isn't about disciplining. It's like, hey, you lost $5 because you were on task. You got to make that money back, right? You know how you're going to do it be on task, right? Be accountable. And it's going to be your diligence that's going to, that's going to support that process. So it's been a, we baby stepped it. Um, it's been like for this week, I didn't take off points if they had to use the restroom and do whatever they needed to do uh, because we're, we're getting acclimated to that. I think it'll be great uh, once it gets rolling, uh, but again, it's new to all our students. So we'll, we'll get there eventually. Uh, again, regarding the discipline, discipline ladder that's in front of you right here. Um, again, let's talk about collaboration, uh, positivity, uh, and uh, effort. Um, I give warnings, a couple warnings, two, three warnings, uh, and then those warnings are usually an, an effort to redirect. Um, hey, we're, we're talking too much. Let's get focused on what we have to do. Hey, we're sharing uh, you know, conversation jokes, uh, letters, whatever it is. That's a distraction. Let's get back on task. Hey, uh, you know, our line's not moving until everybody is, you know, quiet and ready to move through the hallways because other classes are in session and we don't want to be a disruption, right? Fifth grade, let's be the example. Uh, when we're walking through the hallways, we're walking out to the playground area, we're moving to lunch or to one of our electives, um, so on and so forth. So that discipline letter is, is just a uh, reinforcement of what the expectation already is, what the social norm already is, how we should already be moving through our, our our daily lives and so this is just an extension of that you know i'm not like writing names on a board because you're talking too much i write names on the board if you have a deduction from your currency which isn't necessarily a bad thing you know it could just be for you know you had to you want and an, another thing um that they can use their currency for is a free break right a 20 minute free break any point in time in the day they just say you need a break right it is not necessarily something that's related to like mental health or anything like that they just want a break if they have fifty dollars that they want to spare then they can just say hey i want a 20-minute break i'll set a timer they can go to the back there's a 
uh, beanbag couch back there, library or where a little studio is. They can go sit down, chill, draw, whatever. But they lose fifty dollars from their currency. And again, if they're at fifty dollars and they don't have eighty for Friday, so they have to make that decision and decide if that's something you want to do, right? Kind of like balancing your checkbook, you know, just a little bit. You know, I can't do this because I have to do this, and being you know really savvy in that regard. Uh, so again, that policy, that currency model is there. Um, and so uh, we're going to just build on that a little bit. My contact information, as I specified before, uh, my email is here. Um, feel free to screenshot, or if you already have the syllabus, you might already have my email there. Um, I'm really, uh, I'm better on my email. I'm not great, uh, but I do check it on a daily basis. So if you sent me something and I haven't seen it, I might need to reorganize the way it's set up. I think I get important stuff at the top and not important stuff at the bottom. I don't know. I got to work on that. Uh, but also we have the Class Dojo. If you don't have access to Class Dojo, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I can get you our uh, classroom invite or I can try to add you as a family. I'm still kind of working on some of this technology. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, we have a, a Google Classroom. I haven't utilized it for summits just yet. I do have it established, um, but that is the link there and I can send that link to you. I'll drop that into Class Dojo as well and I'll put that as a, um, a post on Parent Square um, by next week. So you'll see some of our um, assignments in there. And in the worst case scenario, which fingers crossed will not happen this school year um, with the school closing for whatever reason, if it ever did occur, Google Classroom is the primary method we would utilize for disseminating assignments, connecting for a virtual class, so on and so forth. So it's good to just have that link, but we're going to be here, right? That's the plan. All right. Um, there is an Instagram. I do have a teacher Instagram. I haven't used it yet. I did establish it. I know some parents, it was helpful for some parents previously um, when I worked with middle school. Um, it may not be a preference. And because we have Class Dojo and Parent Square and all those other things, we'll just leave that to see if it's something that can be beneficial. I do want to uh, um, you know, differentiate uh, my instruction and my assessment and give multiple uh, mediums of connection for students and parents so that we can be the most uh, productive and the most efficient that we possibly can. Um, real quick, guys, before we go to this curriculum coverage, real quick, and I'm sure you kind of have a, a decent idea of what the, the curriculum is so far um, from what we've covered, uh, homework, some homework that's been assigned, textbooks that have been taken home. Um, but uh, I'll pause for a second before we look at the curriculum and see if there are any questions. Anything in the chats? Let me see here. Awesome. And I'll make sure I'll have everyone out of here by nine minutes, I promise. All right. Um, and once again, if you have any specific questions about your scholar, uh, please don't hesitate to send me an email. Uh, reach out by Class Dojo, as I mentioned, Parent Square, uh, which I just got comfortable with today. Um, but I, I can check messages there and we can definitely set up a time for a parent teacher conference. Um, and I'm really flexible with my schedule uh, in the evenings for the most part. So I look forward to those uh, messages. Um, our curriculum coverage, what we're looking at in math is we are, um, we are covering uh, adding and subtracting fractions, multiplication and division of fractions, uh, two-digit division, um, decimal fractions, place values. The music teacher or myself. Um, uh, uh, volume and size. Uh, and where we're at now is we're with place values, single and double digit multiplication, which is a lot of the continuation from fourth grade, getting them acclimated. So they are comfortable getting into the multiplication division of fractions, uh, uh, division, doing more of a division also with area and perimeter, which we've touched on uh, ever, ever so um, briefly, uh, but we'll get more into that as well. But learning multiple methods of performing these mathematical tasks. Um, we talked a lot about our box method and our traditional method or standard method, um, but in expanding those a little bit as well. So you just have a lot of different ways to attack problems and finding the best, the best way that works for them. Um, so again, we can differentiate that, uh, that instruction, but also looking at different ways to assess because we, students learn different ways, right? They have different strengths, uh, different focuses. And so I want to make sure that we're inclusive within the classroom environment. So we're catching all our scholars, wherever they are, and we're you know, being able to determine their mastery of content, which is what it's all about. Uh, what we've been able to explore so far in ELA, of course, uh, is uh, identifying key ideas, uh, details, and integration of knowledge. Uh, we've covered uh, a couple of small stories. A uh, great one was One Hen, um, which talked about a, um, a young man that came from a challenging environment, a impoverished environment, single parent household uh, who couldn't continue school. I had to work and help his family out, but being very, um, uh, being very 
um, creative in finding an outlet for him to be able to not only follow in his passions, be able to return to school, but also support his family. Um, again, working through that due diligence, being accountable. Um, so a lot of those uh, core, uh, I think, uh, attributes that can build on the character of our students. So we study a lot of, uh, of these type of novels, these type of stories. Uh, we're reading The Jar of Dreams right now about a Japanese American family um, in the Bay Area that faced a lot of uh, hardship, but also re uh, reconnecting with their culture, their heritage, their lineage, um, and learning lessons along the way. Um, so in that process, we are learning about craft and structure, uh, the, again, uh, ranges of reading uh, and levels of text complexity, complexity, and we just uh, are in the midst of uh, completing our fluency assessment, so we'll have a better gauge of where our scholars are with reading out loud, challenging language, um, and also comprehension of text. Um, but also, uh, we're supposed to say text here, text types and purposes, uh, production, uh, distribution, research, and range of writing. We have a journal writing uh, that we start our day with our do now, uh, where students have the opportunity, uh, opportunity to explore a multitude of topics, but also there's some free writes in there as well. We talk about different types of language, uh, different ways to approach, uh, provide model sentences to help with the uh, initiation of their responses, uh, but that hopefully will... Um, contribute to their vocabulary acquisition and use. Um, but what also helps that is our vocabulary usage. We're on our third vocabulary list so far. And we are, uh, we, you know, we have fun with the Jeopardy game today in, uh, in regard to vocabulary, but we're learning new words every week. So you should start to see those big words popping up at dinner time. Uh, you know, they're, they're throwing, <laughs> this feels like abandonment, mom, if you're not going to provide me a dessert this evening, right? If that happens, I apologize. I take full responsibility for that, um, if that occurs. Within social studies, uh, really exciting. We're learning about the Americas. Um, and as uh, a lot of our administrators and teachers know here, um, all history doesn't always include all the information that we need. So we're having a lot of fun with learning about um, nomads or the travelers of uh, the early earth. Uh, and traversing different spaces and um, acquiring space in land, becoming native to that land. And of course, settlers coming over and, you know, change is happening with the, um, the ownership of land. Some of it good, some of it bad, but again, some of it not addressed fully uh, as our history books provide. So uh, being very inclusive of all areas of history, uh, all interactions between different nationalities and ethnicities, I think is very important, especially for our, our classroom environment. Uh, but we are having a good time, I think, with exploring uh, these early American uh, settlers, the Native Americans, and also the European uh, explorers that came over. Um, and then we're going to get into exploring more of the areas of the Americas, of course, North America, Central America, and South America as well. Um, the conflict that ensued as a result, um, looking at political, religious, religious, social, and economic conditions of colonial, colonial era and exploration, um, and then getting into our current um, American history, where they'll explore more in middle school. But of course, we'll initiate that. We're talking about the American Revolution, uh, the United States Constitution. Um, we'll talk about the Declaration of Independence a little bit as well, the American Republic, um, the early years of the America um, that we know, the industrialized America, uh, co uh, colonies that were established, immigration, settlements, um, economics, all that good stuff. So uh, the fun stuff. <laughs> Of history. And last but not least, we are exploring a little bit of science, but as uh, Principal mentioned, we do have a standalone science teacher. Um, so we will we won't be covering science too much in class, but we'll we'll every now and again touch on that. I do have a couple of experiments that I want to do in class, so we'll see how that fits in with the science curriculum of our science teacher. Okay. Um, our daily schedule is pretty consistent. Um, we start up with our do now activity, which is a journal. Uh, we have the uh, social emotional learning. We watch a video pretty consistently on a daily basis, unless there's extra stuff we need to provide time for uh, in ELA, math, social studies, or another area. Um, and then we kind of do that, the social emotional uh, learning that leads us into that first hour before our, our recess, nine to 10. Uh, we'll get into ELA, which is our language, grammar, spelling, uh, and vocabulary between uh, 9 and 10, 15-ish, 10, 20-ish. We have our recess at that time. Then we go right into a snack right after our recess. Sometimes we do that standalone outside um, where we'll sit at the picnic tables and kind of just relax a little bit after recess. Sometimes we bring it into, into the classroom environment, but we're, again, we're safe and we do all the stuff we need to do inside there. Uh, we have math usually, usually at that time. Sometimes we break it up and we do our draw our dreams, um, vocabulary and grammar. Um, and we'll take that into lunch. 
Uh, after lunch, we usually come back and we have an SSR. So students are invited to bring uh, books from home um, that they are passionate about, that cover themes, subject matters that are dear to them. But I have a, a pretty sizable library behind me here. I'm going to bring in new books on a consistent basis. And I'm actually going to get a new bookshelf to put in here as well that they, uh, they're, they're, they're familiar with, with the extra books that we kind of have sitting around. Um, and then there are... I don't know if they're called electives, but we have uh, music and PE that we have Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, respectively. And then we have science on Friday mornings. And we also have our, uh, our social emotional uh, push in a teacher on Fridays as well. Uh, so uh, that in a nutshell is what we are doing uh, in these early couple of weeks of the school year. Again, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I invite you to reach out to me and let me know uh, what your thoughts are, if you need feedback, if you want to have direct and specific conversations about your scholar. Um, we're having a good time so far, uh, and I expect it to get even better. Uh, but it's been a pleasure meeting with you today. Uh, let me know if you have anything uh, on your mind. I'll take a last couple questions, if any. Uh, but if there are none, then it's been a pleasure. Mr. Foreman, row 26, fifth grade. Uh, and I look forward to uh, speaking with you later and more specifically about uh, our scholars and getting them to the next level. All right. This will be a video that I will find, put, probably put, uh, it'll be on YouTube, but it'll be like locked. So you only whoever has access to it, but I'll put it on Parents Square if you know any parents that couldn't make it or whatever the case. All righty. Any additional, any, if anything before we go, I'll let you, let you go. I know I ha I'll held you for a little bit here. You got to go though, I understand. All right. Well, have a good evening. It's a pleasure making your acquaintance uh, and I look forward to uh, seeing more of our scholars in our learning environment, motivating them to the next level.